In 698, at the age of 74, Wu Zetian, who had been a lifelong fighter, felt the burden of her age and the weakening of her mental and physical strength. This moment coincided with the least desirable challenge she had to face, the issue of the succession to the throne of the Wuzhou dynasty. Ancient China was a male-dominated society, and the struggle for the throne in every dynasty was exclusively within the realm of men. For a woman to vie for power in such an environment, she had to endure even greater challenges and overcome more difficulties. Wu Zetian rose to the occasion and became the first and only female emperor in Chinese history, an accomplishment even more remarkable than Qin Shi Huang's. As an emperor, Wu Zetian defied ancient traditional ethics, but she found herself bound by these very ethics when confronted with the matter of succession. She hesitated to pass on the throne to the heir, Li Dan, as he was already the fifth emperor of the Li Tang dynasty. However, circumstances forced Li Dan to seek her proclamation as emperor and take the name Wuluan with the intention to name the country Tang if he were to inherit the throne of the Wuzhou dynasty. Wu Zetian also never considered allowing her daughter, Princess Taiping, to ascend the throne. Her journey to become an empress aimed to change her own social status, not to alter the status of other women. At one point, Wu Zetian contemplated having her nephew, Wu Qingxi, succeed her, thereby maintaining the Wuzhou dynasty's legacy. However, her prime ministers reminded her that according to traditional etiquette, only sons would perform sacrificial activities to worship their parents, while nephews would not have this privilege. Faced with this reminder, Wu Zetian reluctantly gave up her last struggle, yielding to traditional ethics, and ultimately decided to pass on the throne of the Zhou dynasty to Prince Li Xian. During a coup attempt, when the rebels entered the palace where Wu Zetian resided, she expressed surprise and asked who caused the rebellion. Zhang Jianji responded, revealing that Zhang Yiji and Zhang Chongzong had conspired to rebel, and he had executed them on the prince's orders. Zhang Jianji refrained from informing Wu Zetian earlier, fearing a potential leak of information. The coup ended with the rebels being slain within the palace's forbidden area, with Zhang Jianji acknowledging that he and the officials involved deserved punishment for their actions. Upon seeing Prince Li Xian in the crowd, Wu Zetian addressed him, Did you ask me to do this? Those two boys have already been killed. You can return to the East Palace. Prime Minister Yen Yen Fan stepped forward and objected, How can the Crown Prince go back to the East Palace? At the beginning, the Emperor entrusted his beloved Crown Prince to Your Majesty. Now, with Your Majesty aging, the Crown Prince has long been missed by the Li family. The ministers cannot forget the kindness of Taizong and the Emperor, so they respect the Prince's decision to punish the rebellious ministers. Your Majesty, please consider passing the throne to the Prince to honor the will of heaven and the people. Noticing Li Zhan, the son of Li Yifu, whom she had once promoted, among the crowd, Wu Zetian remarked, are you also the one who killed Zhang Yiji? I have treated you and your father well, and today's unfortunate events were unexpected. Li Zhan felt ashamed and remained silent. Wu Zetian turned to Chui Xianwei and asked, Others were promoted upon recommendation, but you were promoted by me. Why are you here? Chui Xianwei replied, I am here to repay your majesty's great kindness to me. Wu Zetian recognized that her power had vanished, so she chose not to resist further. Three days later, on February 23, 705, Wu Zetian abdicated the throne in favor of Crown Prince Li Xian. The Wuzhou dynasty, the only one in Chinese history ruled by a female emperor, came to an end after 15 years. This event marked the successful restoration of the Tang dynasty, known as the Dragon Coup, orchestrated by Zhang Jianji and the prime ministers. Although the Xinlong Coup ostensibly targeted only Wu Zetian's male favorite, Zhang Yiji, and his associates, its ultimate goal was to end Wu Zetian's rule over the Wuzhou court. Throughout her life, Wu Zetian wrestled with traditional Chinese morality and culture, but she did not represent any particular community. Despite being the only female emperor in Chinese history, her actions were not driven by advocacy for women's rights. Wu Zetian never considered passing the throne to her daughter Princess Taiping or any other women. Her focus was on changing her own social status, and she succeeded in doing so, with her gender being incidental to her accomplishments.